All right, so our next video in our biostatistics unit is about measurements and uncertainty. So when we're doing measurements, just like the hummingbird example we were doing before, we were measuring all the beaks of these hummingbirds to see if there was a statistical difference between the bill lengths of the two species of hummingbirds. When we're doing these measurements, we're going to have a margin of error. So for example, for this first part, if a hummingbird weighs 3.9 grams plus or minus 0.1 grams is the error for that measuring device because no measuring device is going to be exactly perfect. And if we're looking at rulers as well, our example down here, they have an uncertainty at both ends as well. So the bill of this hummingbird is 26 millimeters plus or minus one millimeter, okay? So with our measurements, we can be pretty certain plus or minus a little bit, okay? So when we are doing means and averages, we are going to have a little bit of uncertainty with that. So the mean or the average is the measure of central tendency. So that's going to be what is the average, right? So N, that letter is always going to stand for sample size. And this is through all of biology. So we're going to kind of see it again and again when we're looking at things. N is going to be our sample size. So the bigger our N number is, the more certain we can actually be of our measurements. So here in this chart, that is our raw data. The mean needs to be consistent with those decimal places. So we see that our raw data, everything is measured to the 10th. So when we do an average, we're going to want to measure that to the 10th. And we also see that our uncertainty is plus or minus 0.1 millimeter. So that is also to the tenth as well. So when we are calculating our mean or our average, so x with a line over it, that is our mean. This little z shape, you're going to see that quite a bit in different formulas. That means the sum of. So this means the sum of all of our values divided by n, which is our sample size. That is going to be our mean. So n is the number of pieces of data that we have, and x is each individual piece of data, and that's how we get our mean. So when we are making a graph, we are making sure that we are doing good graphing. So we want to make sure that we have our descriptive title and a graph number every single time we do a graph. Um, the key in science is if your title is very, very boring, it's a good title. And sometimes we're also going to want to have labeled points. This is not an always rule. This is a sometimes rule. We are going to want to make sure that our y-axis is labeled not only with our units, but also with our uncertainty measurement if we have that. And we also want to make sure that we begin at zero. Uh, sometimes we will have a broken graph where we'll skip a bunch of numbers, but we always want to make sure that we have zero on the bottom, okay? So from these means, we might see that this species of hummingbird actually has a longer bill than A, but that mean only tells us part of the story because we need to see what our error actually is and what our standard deviation is, what the range of this. So the mean is only telling the central tendency, but we don't know if all of the different things are clustered around the mean or if they have high variability. So this first one here, if this is our mean, the range of our data is clustered in a very, very small subset. So this is a very tight mean, very little margin of error. Everything is close to the mean here. However, if both of these bill lengths have a mean with a wide range, we have a little bit more variability and we're going to get more overlap. So here, our mean would have maybe error bars like this. And our second graph because there's a bigger range, we would have a little more overlap, just like those um, ones that we saw before. 
So this is why we also need to use standard deviation. So in the Schoology Folger for today, there is a video about standard deviation that I want you guys to look at, and there's a worksheet that goes along with it as well. Standard deviation is really, really important to understand. And it's looking at what the range of this data is because the mean doesn't really tell us a lot. So for example, if we look at this number line, our mean of all of these numbers together is right here, but it doesn't show us this crazy outlier, okay? So we need to look at the range of this data. If we would graph these, this is kind of what it would look like. So our mean is in the middle, and we have a really, really wide range of information here. And this is also really skewed data. So our mean is not in the middle. It's not a normal distribution. A normal distribution curve would go like this, but we have some outliers over here. So just by looking at the mean, it doesn't tell us the whole story with this data. So standard deviation is gonna be the measure of the spread of most of the data. So with this, this is where it gets, um, kind of tricky a little bit. So within one standard deviation, so plus or minus one is where 68% of the data lies. So if our mean is 50, with this distribution curve, 68% of our data is between 40 and 60. So this gives us a more reliable view of the data. We can see that all the data here is squished really, really close together. Two standard deviations, are 95% of the data. So I might just clear this. So if we look at this little bit lighter blue section, 95% of the data falls within that range. So that would be two standard deviations. So if we look at this, this shows us the standard deviation. So what percent of the population is found within one standard deviation of the mean? 68% of our population. Okay, and what percent fall within two standard deviations of the mean? That is 96% of our data. And then what percent would fall within three standard deviations of the mean? 99.8%. So we can never quite say 100%, but 99.8% are going to fall within three standard deviations of that mean. So here's a little bit of a practice question. So if we have a set of length measurements are taken with a mean of 2.5 and a standard deviation of 0.5, which of the following statements down below is true? So 60% of the data lie between 2.5 and 3.5 centimeters. 68% uh, of the data fall between 1.5 and 3.5. 95% of the data lie between 1.5 and 3.5. And 95% of the data lie between 2 and 3 centimeters. So the way we're gonna figure this out is if we have our 2.5 centimeters and one standard deviation is 0.5. So if we add 0.5, we get three. And if we subtract 3.5, we get two. So that would be one standard deviation away. So from there, can you figure it out what the answer is? And so the answer is C, 95% of the data lie between 1.5 and 3.5. Because if we take two standard deviations, 2.5 plus 1, which would be two standard deviations, is going to be that higher number. And then if we minus 1, that is going to be 2.5 minus 1, which would be 1.5. So that's where 95% of our data lies with our standard deviations. Okay, so this is the measure of the spread of our data. So with these two data sets, we need to see which one has the most variability. So that's when we're gonna calculate the standard deviation. The mean isn't the most important part, okay? So when we calculate that standard deviation, here we see that this first set of data has a much larger standard deviation than the second one. So these first bills are way more variable in length than our second group of bills. So which has the longest mean length? That would be the second one. 
and the greatest variability would be the first one. And we can tell that from our standard deviation. So standard deviation is a spread and the error bars are graphical representation of that standard deviation. So when we're looking at this, which one has the highest mean? That would be set A and the greatest variability would be set B. So error bars represent that standard deviation. And the significance of this is the overlap. So if our standard deviations overlap a lot, they have a lot of shared points, and they're not likely to be actually statistically different than each other. So these hummingbirds might have, on average, kind of the same beak size. However, if we have no overlap or they have few or share data points, they're more likely to be statistically different. So the difference is more likely to be a real difference and not just a difference based off of chance. Okay, so here we have our results and they show a very small overlap in our data sets. We can also clearly see this overlap if we plot them in frequency curves. We're not really going to do this, it's just a different way to look at it. So here we have a large overlap of our two data points, so this would be our mean, and then these spreads would be our standard deviation. If they have a small overlap, these middle points would be the mean, and then those spreads are our standard deviation, and these are more likely to be significantly or statistically different results. So now we're looking at these down here. So which set of data has a larger range? Which one has a greater standard deviation? Which one has more precise results, a higher mean, and a higher frequency at the mean? So with this, we are looking at a larger range. That would be set B, so all of that pretty big range. And it has a greater standard deviation because it has that wider spread. More precise results, we can guess that A is more precise just based on the spread. A also has a higher mean, or I'm sorry, not a higher mean, down here, this is our mean, <laughs> I'm sorry. So our higher mean is set B, but a higher frequency at the mean, so more data points that are at that average is A. Okay, so this is an interesting study. This is actually stuff from a real study. So students watched a one minute video of a lecture and in one video, the lecturer was fluent and engaging. In the second one, the lecturer was a little less fluent. So uh, do students really do better if the teacher is more engaging? Okay, so let's look at the actual results down here. So our predicted was that with a fluent speaker, so somebody that was very eloquent in how they spoke and very engaging, that people would learn better. And with a disfluent speaker, people thought they would learn less. However, they learned about the same. And especially with these error bars, they overlapped quite a bit. So it doesn't really matter if your teacher is really, really engaging or if your teacher is kind of dry, you're actually going to learn about the same. Isn't that crazy? That's kind of crazy. Um, so what do these error bars tell us about reliability and how, or, and how valid is the study in terms of population sizes, okay? So this is kind of what that information tells us. So what does this all mean? What do the means mean? So most scientists agree that if we have two deviations above or below the mean, that you are going to be statistically different from each other and difference is not due to chance. So if they don't overlap, that distance difference is not due to chance and we are going to reject that null hypothesis that those two values are the same. 